is there a white wine that has the versatility and adaptability of Chardonnay that isn't Chardonnay? And what is it we might be able to find on the back of a bottle of wine that's gonna help us pick one over another? All of that coming up next. Chenin Blanc is among the most versatile and malleable white grapes in the world. It can be made in so many different styles of wine. Like Chardonnay that we discussed last week, it can grow in cool, moderate, or warm climates. It can be made into still wines. It can be made into great sparkling wines. It can range from light-bodied to full-bodied. Tends to be pretty high in acid, like Chardonnay. And it can also be really age-worthy as well. As some bottles growing to be 100 to you know, 50 to 100 years old and costing hundreds of dollars. Thankfully today, we've got a value plate under 25. One thing that's really significantly different about Chenin Blanc versus Chardonnay though, is how much it can vary in its sweetness to dryness levels. And in the champagne video a couple weeks ago, I demonstrated drinking some shots of lemon juice and mixing it with simple syrup. And that's kind of what you can do with Chenin Blanc here. If you make it really sweet, it's actually gonna be well balanced because of the high acid level. So imagine just drinking pure lemon juice, that's gonna taste awful. Drinking pure simple syrup, that's probably gonna taste pretty awful too. But you combine them together and you get lemonade and it can be perfectly balanced if you do it right. And that's something that Chenin Blanc gets right. So Chenin Blanc can grow in a number of different places. It first started off in the Loire Valley like a thousand years ago and it's still really prominent there today. You can find it in South Africa and great value plays in South Africa. It is the second most planted grape in South Africa. It makes like 20% of the, the vines there. And it used to be huge in California. It's still grown there, but up until like the 1980s, it was more prevalent there than Chardonnay is. So let's talk a little bit about this particular wine. This is from the Loire Valley, specifically within the region called Vouvray. And there's a couple other regions that make great Chenin Blanc there, but Vouvray is probably my favorite and it's one of the more easy to find ones as well. And here's a couple of different Chenin Blancs. This one's from a different region. These two are both Vouvray. And the thing about Vouvray is... And what was that 10 minute lecture on? What was Vouvray's? Are you kidding me? Who gives a f Why don't we just move on to the tasting? Let's try some Chenin Blanc, shall we? Pretty pale intensity on the color. I'm gonna call this lemon. You guys can kind of get a look at it there with the white background. The, uh, I'm already seeing some legs on this and, and they're pretty slow moving. So I'm guessing this might have a little bit more of a, a fuller body. Ooh. <laughs> really pronounced aromas on the nose. A uh, couple of things that jump out right away. There's this honeyed smell that's really beautiful. Some white, kind of like white flower blossoms. Something floral there. But on the fruit, it is just apricots. Oh my goodness. Yeah, apricots, maybe a little bit of lemon. Maybe it's like lemon blossom was the flower I was smelling. Apricot, some peach, just a lot of the stone fruits are really coming through on this and maybe a little bit of pineapple as well. I am excited to taste this, and there's no reason I have to wait anymore. <laughs> mm. Wow. Wow, that's delightful. Okay. <laughs> All right, focus. So very pronounced uh, flavors on this as well. But first let's get to the, uh, the other qualifications. So on a dry to sweet scale, this is a little bit past the halfway point. So it's not, not bone dry, not quite dry, not quite off dry. I'm gonna call it medium, but not sweet. And this is the thing about Chenin Blanc. Because this has kind of a medium high to high acidity as well, with the sweetness being where it is and the acidity being where it is, 
they both come into really good balance together and that makes this just outstanding. So medium high on the acid, there's no tannins that I can detect. The alcohol level on this is 12 and a half and, and it felt beautiful uh, going down. I, I got just the slightest bit of heat. You know it is, it's there. This is 12 and a half, this is 13 and a half, this is 13. So it's a little bit on the lower end of the Chenin Blancs I've got here today, but I'm gonna call it a medium low alcohol level. Just felt great, I loved it. And the body on this, my goodness, this thing felt so rich and full and round and just gorgeous in my mouth. Great, great mouth feel. So I'm gonna say this was, this was full bodied and uh, the finish on this just went for, I'm still, I haven't tasted this and I don't know how long it's been. I am still tasting this. Great finish on this as well. I'm gonna try it one more time. I love a full bodied white wine. Wow. A lot of the flavors that I, or the aromas that I detected are there in the flavors as well. Very pronounced flavors of the apricot, peach. I did get some of that lemon. Maybe more of like a dried pineapple. You know, if you get the little, you know, the sealed package of dried fruits, that kind of dried pineapple taste, um, more so than a fresh pineapple. There is some sweetness there. So yeah, I'm gonna say I got a little bit of honey on, on the palate as well. But again, this acid and sweetness balance is outstanding. It doesn't taste sugary. There are, I don't really care for Moscato and I'm not necessarily looking forward to moving on to the M's here when I do these. Maybe I'll be surprised, but I just don't really like really sweet wines. This has sweetness to it, but because of the balance with the acidity, it's just delightful. Awesome. I really, really like this wine. This is probably the best white wine I've had this year. I'm gonna score this seven and a half on my 10 point scale. This is really, really good. I like this a lot. And this thing was, you know, less than $25. So you can get great, great value out of Vouvray if you know what you're looking for. And that gives me a nice segue to the tip of the week. First, uh, let me just do a quick food pairing. This is uh, this is gonna go great with any kind of, of seafood. And I'm thinking maybe a little bit of a heavier dish. Because this is a full bodied white, I wouldn't want a delicate flaky fish. So you want something a little bit more dense, mahi-mahi, uh, salmon, scallops, um, uh, ahi tuna. So, a lot of things you could do with this from a seafood perspective, be great with vegetables. This thing is just awesome to sit by itself too. So certainly give Chenin Blanc a try and uh, this region in, in, in the lower valley of Vouvray is a great place to start. Let's start off this tip of the week with a little clip from the winemaker herself from this week's Chenin Blanc. Je me présente, je suis Céline Champalou du domaine Champalou à Vouvray. Donc nous sommes vignerons indépendants sur l'appellation Vouvray et nous travaillons 25 hectares. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Oh, yeah, I haven't watched that half a dozen times. I mean, who would want to watch a video about a woman explaining winemaking in French? Anyway, what Céline goes on to talk about in the rest of the video is how she's a small independent winemaker, what her wine is like and the soils and how they aged on the leaves and all these interesting things about this 10,000 case production wine that they produce. Well, if you're choosing between her bottle and another one at the store, you can Google her and the winery and watch the video and learn all about it right there in the store. Or you can do a much easier trick and that is look on the back and see that her wine was imported by Kermit Lynch. Now, there are scores of wine importers out there, but the job of the wine importer is to go out and find hidden gems like Celine Champalou and bring them into the United States. That's their job. And what you can do is pay attention to the wines that you like and pay attention to the wines you don't like that are coming in from outside the US. And it is gonna be on the back of every bottle imported by, 
And in her case, it's imported by Kermit Lynch Wine Merchant in Berkeley, California. Now, I recently bought this bottle of Puyi Fume, and it's been a long time since I bought a bottle from there. I don't know what I'm looking for. I don't know who makes a good one and who doesn't. But I look at the back, and sure enough, this is imported by Rosenthal Wine Merchant. I happen to know Neil Rosenthal's palette is pretty similar to mine, and so I felt confident buying this bottle, knowing this is an importer that goes out and finds winemakers that suit my style. So that is a really easy way, rather than sitting there Googling in the store what, what there is to know about one wine versus another wine, look and see who the importer is, pay attention to it as you're drinking those wines, and you'll start to identify a few names. If you look around the room here, half my wines all come from the Premier Wine Company. That's the importer on most of these wines. There are a number of them out there and you don't need to know them all. You just need to know a couple of them that seem to work for you and just pay attention to that. It's a lot easier than trying to pay attention to the thousands and thousands of people making wine. Thank you for watching another episode of Wine This Week with Scott Leak. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If so, please give a like to it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. Please join me next week as we move on to an interesting varietal known as Sanso. I don't know that I've ever had a 100% varietal of Sanso before. It's normally used for mixing. So I'm excited to give this a try. Until then, keep trying new wines. And as always, cheers. Mm. White wine grapes out there. Looking forward to sharing that with you. And hopefully the stomping of children up above is not so loud that it's coming through my mic. I'm gonna do another take. You've had a Chardonnay. Now, you probably fall in one of two, nope. But if you have had a Chardonnay, chances are, oh, I meant to say something else there. Try it again. Arguably one, but we're gonna go with two. Now, I don't like where this is going, so I'm gonna start over. Take two. This is going on way too long. Ugh. This is falling apart. This is a bacterial. Ugh, that sounds gross. Let's start over. Let's drink some Chardonnay. Excuse me. Let's taste some. Oh God, I said Chardonnay. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the episode. It's if, <laughs> uh, we got it.